talking about? I take care of it, but I just want a ticket so I can come back to court. If I get a ticket, it's going to be more money. Well, now I'm talking about fighting in the court, so. Do I now? I said, as long as I got the proof of fighting in the court. Right, I need to get this part. I need this part taken care of first, then I'll write you a ticket. I can't do it all at once. What's up? What's going on, everybody? Lockout Man back again with another podcast for you guys. Welcome back to the Lockout Men podcast show. Y'all know what it is. And in today's episode, I am coming to you guys with another podcast interview. Yes, sir. This young man right here I found on Facebook. He had a situation. A situation. A situation. A, a, a sticky situation with uh with I guess a DOT dude but we're we gonna find out all about that and more when we uh talk to this young man all right if you guys like content like this don't forget to like subscribe comment share and hit that bell in that all button so that you know when I go live and do back I mean behind the scenes interview I would like to welcome the LOM community up in here as that they watching behind the scenes what's going on y'all how y'all doing out there uh if you guys want to support me in doing in in my endeavors yo hook your brother up with some coffee man you know what i'm saying the coffee link is in the description below along with the cash app dollar sign lockout man make sure you do that well and like i said before in today's episode right here man we uh found this young man like i said on facebook so what i like to do is bring in my man, Gassy Williams. All right, bro. We 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 gonna have right. to. We we gonna have to. We we gonna have to. Uh, we we gonna have, we need some clarification, man. We we need some clarification on your name, right quick. So your name is Gassy. That's G A S S E Y, right? Correct. How how did you did 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 you come up with that name or what what what's the story behind your name, man? I, I believe the story behind my name is back years ago, you know, back in the seventies and sixties and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, they had midwife coming in, and and when the parents giving birth, you know, they had midwife, and I, I believe it might not spell good because it's supposed to be Jason. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it got back from uh. From Jackson on the birth certificate had gassy, mm, okay. and so I went through school. I went I went through school at Jason at the end. I made sure they put on my uh, diploma gassy, okay. so all my schoolmates know me at Jason. Okay, so that they wouldn't so that they wouldn't make fun of you or anything like that while you're while you're going through school. It, you, you you went through oh, no. the, you went through the entire. You went through the entire school, like, you know, from first all the way up until you graduated with with Jason? Yes, because that's what it's supposed to be. In. Even on the doors, when you go back to the classroom, they're always Jason, Fort Cut, Jason, everything with Jason. Oh, okay. So okay. when I had my first child, I named him Gassy. <laughs> so he went through school at Gassy. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so he didn't did he come he he didn't come home and be like, yo, dad. Yo, I, I, you know, all these kids is teasing me because you know, kids, kids have no filter, man. They, they have no filter. Right. So, you know, I, I, I was it for him? Now he's what, Gassy Jr. Yeah, he, he Gassy Jr. Okay. So, how did he, how did he feel about going through school with, with his name Gassy, man? Well, he, he was okay. You know how you say. You know, name fit people, and that name fitted him. You know, he was a uh, he was a rough little kid in school. You know, so oh, okay, okay. Therefore, he, he 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 was so bad in school when he was getting transferred. They didn't even wait to get the transfer papers from the other school. They sent all the stuff over. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I want to say I, the woman. <laughs> <laughs> I had, you know, my son, uh, he graduated from my uh from my automata. Uh me and his mother, we we both 
had diff had very different uh views on his schooling as he was coming up you know she wanted him to go to uh you know a catholic school private school which which he did you know you know through uh from first to maybe eighth grade or something like that let me see eighth and then no 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 seven something like that I, I don't know i can't remember but i know he went through private uh private catholic school while he was in elementary and junior high school but in the midst of trying to get him to finish out uh to finish out you know catholic school it didn't it didn't work for us per se because you know we you know we you know we're an average family you know what i'm saying and we was already right. trying you know we was already trying to make ends meet you know what i'm saying and unfortunately when it came to you know having them to go through high school you know the ends didn't properly meet so he had to end up going you know finish out his school through you know public school which was my alma mater, Glenville. Shout out to Glenville, and uh, and he had, you know, he had a little bit of, he had a little bit of issues, you know, when he went through, you know, uh, public school. You know, he had a, you know, the first year transition from, you know, everything that he learned in Catholic school and everything that he became accustomed at in Catholic school. You know, he pretty much had to, he he pretty much had to adapt to you know, the different type of type of styles that kids was coming in 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 uh in the high school in, you know, public school. Did your son had that issue uh when he was when he was coming out of when he was coming out of school with, with his name named Gassy? No, he 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 did. You know, they kinda asked the same questions, you know. Uh, like they would ask me, you know, then that's most when I was a duck because they would ask me what I come up with that name. Mm -hmm. And I had to get into it with the the uh, the lady down at the Jackson place. One day, I'm trying to get my birth certificate. We're doing them cruises, mm -hmm. and she gonna try to tell me my name start with a P. And I'm telling her, you know, my social security and all that is gassy. And I have already been out once before. And she gonna try to she gonna try to make it, make it like it's gassy. I like no, nah, it's gassy. You know, and then thing is. How you gonna tell me what my name is? You know, they already jacked it up with Gassy. Right. They probably been Jason. And then this woman gonna tell me Tassie, like she just got the power to, to change the G to a T. You know, she trying to give you, she trying <laughs> to give you a woman's name, bro. <laughs> yes. she, she trying, she trying to make, she trying to change you from a guy to a girl. What the hell, man? <laughs> That's what I was saying. You know, oh. I'm like, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> So she tried to turn she tried to turn you into Tassie. Ain't that a bitch? I was God damn it, man. Hey, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Look, I had a lawyer tell me, he like, you know, you want me to change that name Gassy? I'm like, nah, it's too late, man. I said I already named my son Gassy. You know, right? You, you you already you are you you sound like you you sound like you the same age I am. I'm I'm in my fifties. How about yourself? 47. 47. So yeah, yeah. So you you said fuck it. I already grew up 47 years with that damn name. So I might as well just keep it. What's the point? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh man. So Gassy, man, let's uh let's uh start with your story, man. Let's uh let's let's see how you got into trucking. Uh you 47 years old. How long you been driving, man? Yeah, uh, about 21 years now. 21 years. So you so you yeah. got in it. You, you what? What made you get in it, man? Like you know, what made you get in it? Coming, coming, coming up. You know, young, high headed. You know, became a hot boy. Mm -hmm. And by being a hot boy, you know, like loving the money. And so, other than going to the restaurant, working in a plant, it's the only way you can get that money. You know, that feel comfortable, live comfortable. Since I didn't go ahead on and go into college, you know, I'm like. Well, the trucking industry is a real good thing to uh, to do and make a lot of money. 
And so I got into trucking, you know, and then started doing late purchase and become, uh, you know, own operator and all that, you know. So living good and started training a lot of different, my relatives also, they follow suit behind me. So mm-hmm. I got a lot of them in it, you know, got two sons in it. Uh, my brother was passed away, got him in it. He was driving, you know, doing some legal stuff, like illegal stuff out there on the road. And I was training them at 16, you know, and uh, and stuff. So just going at it, but build a nice future for all of them, you know. So okay, that's, that's how I got into the to, to the trucking gang. Okay, okay. So you uh so you was uh back you know, back then, uh, a little gassy coming up. You 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 was uh running the streets and all like that. So you figured that you couldn't you, you couldn't do that for a lifetime. So you definitely had to make that change, right? Exactly. Oh, okay, okay. So so made that so made that change, you know. I caught up, you know, did that done there, you know, I was they say and say I try anything once. Mm-hmm. Which, which I won't try anything, you no, know, not anything once. So that ain't so bad. That I did try once. It was over with after that, you know. So it was had had to uh, make a life change and uh and trucking, you know. It was there for for the place that you stay in, you know, small community, or small town, to be able to have some nice things in life, you know. You had trucking, uh, you know, it was the place to go. Well, back then, back then, twenty years ago, uh, what's this? Twenty twenty. So we we talking we talking two thousand, right? Exactly. All right. So uh, around two thousand, I I guess trucking the trucking industry was was pretty fair. Uh, I, I I would say, you know, a lot of the you know mm-hmm. a lot of the old timers from you know from the eighties and the seventies and the sixties felt that you know during their era was a you know it was a lot better coming up in the you know coming up in the industry but in in two thousand you know the millennial i i guess it wasn't right. i i guess it wasn't that bad was it how how was it back then compared to now? Uh, back then, it was it, it was sweeter to me back then because, you know, we had the uh, the law book, you know, instead of dealing with the electronic law, you know, and so we didn't have to worry about, you know, have to call the company and act for PC personal conveyance just to make it, uh, you know, just to drive your own truck that you own, you know, and so by them giving more more authority to the company, it seemed like to me because they like. Where well, a company can can make that decision on giving you PC, mm-hmm. but here you paying for this this, this vehicle and got it leased on, and you're supposed to be a uh, uh, have your own company, not a company of theirs, you know. So mm-hmm. therefore, they want to control the whole whole thing. So back then, it was it was more sweeter, you know, running running our law books, you know, and and not having somebody watching your every move. So it, it was okay. more sweeter back then. So back then you 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 knew back then off the rip that you you wanted to you know jump in the lease purchase or you wanted to own your own truck. So at that particular time you you're you're talking when you're actually leased on to a company and they try to regulate how you run your laws like it's your own truck. How can they how can they do that, Gassy? How how can they regulate you? Uh, you know, run the way you want to run your truck, whether you want to do PC time or or on duty time or or drive time or whatever. Now I know, uh, if 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 it's theirs, if if it's their law book, then they could probably control, you know, control it. But how can they? How can they? I guess my question is, how can they do that if it's your own truck? Well, I guess because they they saying that you uh, leased on to them, you know, okay, and so therefore they don't allow you that one that one hour to go out and get something to eat. Or, uh, uh, you can't even use personal value if you're at the house and try to want to take the truck to the car wash, I mean, truck wash, or take it to the shop. You know, you got to log that, you know, on duty or driving, and you know, and if you want to put it into just say. The, Christmas parade or whatever, you know, now you finna lose, uh, if you sit and want to get a 34 in so you get a fresh 70, therefore at that time now, if, you know, if you don't call them and let them know for them to give you that person's conveyance, then therefore it'll mess up your 34 you sitting there waiting for. 
Mm. You know, and so that's that's the killer part that that they do with this uh, electronic, you know, electronic law now. You know, now like of course, more taking more power from the uh, from the from the driver from the taking more power from the driver. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, yes. now before electronic laws, because you, I guess, I guess uh, they didn't make they didn't make electronic laws mandatory until last year right am i am or was it year before i was it december of 2019 or was it 2018 when they made this mandatory um uh, not sure if it's 18 it might be 18 i think i think it was 18 if you guys know yeah, I believe it was 18. If you guys, yeah. if you guys yeah, know, let 18. us, yeah, let us know in the comments below whether it was either eighteen or nineteen where they made this uh, made e laws mandatory. So before e laws, uh, you 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 was running laws, right? Yeah, take a lot. Okay, and then you could pretty much kind of you know kind of cook the books on <laughs> on how to. On how to get a you know get away with a few things, right? Right. At least if you if you decide you want to get in your own personal truck, then you know your, your commercial truck and go places. Then you know you don't have to worry about losing your hours. Oh, okay. Okay. You know. Now let me ask you this though. Let me ask you this. Uh, now I I know. How to, you know, I know how to, you know, uh, don't get me wrong. I know a few things. I, I know a few things, y'all. But, uh, you know, t taught me, like, what I what I was taught was how to, you know, do the drive line, do the, do the on-duty line, do the uh, brake right. line, you know, the brake, the brake, the on-duty, and the, uh, the off-duty. Okay, and the drive line, you know, on right where right. where because it's not marked on on any of these law books. How do you mark PC in the laws? It's supposed to be uh, with the electric. Oh, to my electronic paper law. No paper, paper, electronic paper. paper. Electronic okay. is easy. Well, I know how to do well, it in electronic, but yeah. But, Let's say, you know, let's say for paper, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I, I know, right. you know, mm -hmm. I, I know how to how to how to do paper laws, but there's there's not a line for personal conveyance on paper laws, though. So how right. do you how do you show that? Right. How do you show that without getting in trouble with DLT? Exactly. Yeah, that's a good question, isn't it? Okay. So you can't go on duty, right? Driving. Right. Yeah. And and back then we was on off duty, so you know. How could you move? To, yeah, you're exactly. Right. How could you move the? Damn it, man! How how? So back then, you know, I'm, and I'm going a little bit farther, not you know, because you 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 2000, so I'm going a little bit farther. Say, uh, maybe the 70s. How was the drivers actually, especially owner operators, how was they able to move their truck without messing with their time? Hmm. I'm gonna have to look that up. You know what? I know, I know, yeah, I know a couple of old school drivers. You know, I might have to, I might have to call up uh, I might have to call up Michael and and ask him how how he was able to do that because that's a good question because now we can like now you know with the company i'm with you know we got pc of course they said that you know you only have uh a certain amount of time to drive on pc i mean you know i i, I drove right I, I, dro I worked at this one company that i damn near drove all day on pc so i and I, I didn't. I don't know how that worked, <laughs> but but yeah, yeah man. And, yeah, and, and crazy. Yeah, you're right. Cause it's crazy because if if you coming home and ain't got no load, I don't care if you're 300 miles. If you ain't got no load, and you coming home and got something you got to do. Then 
What is what? an hour? It come out an hour. You should be able to come all the way. You're not working anymore. Not on a dispatch. Right. But you know what? Yeah. I, you know what? I asked, you know, when I was in orientation at, you know, at the last few companies that I, that I, uh, that I've been at, and I did ask them about personal conveyance and they was the ones that said, oh, okay, well, yeah, personal conveyance, you only have, uh, uh, 100 miles or 120 miles, which constitutes to like two hours or something like that. But they was they also said, and I think I read somewhere in the F F M F M C S A that at the end of the at the end of the drop, right? Unless you're getting right. unless you're getting kicked off the property. You're you can't go on personal convenience to like go home because you're still considered under the load. And I want to know how is that possible that you're considered under the load after you already dropped it and in some cases sent the paperwork in. So how am I still considered under that load? Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. Like to me, they come out with a whole lot of different. They come out with their own scenarios, you know. And the different companies come out with different rules we have to follow. Like you say, the contract signed when they signed the paperwork, it signed off and it it dropped. That done deal. And what and the killing part is when they got these emergencies mm -hmm. right here. Then they want us to, to just drive drive. Right. We want to get. Right. That's crazy. Right. Uh what was that? Last year, uh hurricane down in uh what was that Florida? No, down in Texas. We was, you know, the, we was open to <laughs> yep. we was open to drive. Uh FEMA, we're we're open to drive. <laughs> the 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 pandemic th that we just came <laughs> out. Well, we're exactly. still we're still in. We was open to drive, but now it's like it's it's like you can only do it when we want you to do it, pretty much. Exactly. And that's kind of crazy. Right. That's kind of crazy, bro. That that is kind of crazy, man. It, do it. Do it. It, it is. If it, if it's safe. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Now I've been saying if it's safe for us to do it when they want us to do it, then we should be able to continue to do it when we want to do it. Exactly. Now they did. They they did tweak it. They they did tweak the uh, the um, the hours of service. They did tweak it a little bit, but it's it's still the same. I mean, it, it's it's still the same to me. To me, I I don't see nothing different. I mean, especially you know, I'm not doing paper logs unless you know the 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 e log you know comps out or for whatever reason. But um, excuse me. But uh, but as far as you know, try to trying to tweak you know the H O. I mean the H O S. I mean you're still you still obligated up under the uh, up under up under what it says. You can only you can you can only drive eight hours until your half an hour break. You take a half an hour break, then you get the rest of the three hours of drive time. You can only work. For 14 hours, I mean, well, you can work for as long as you do. You know what I'm saying? But you can only, the shift is only 14 right. hours. And then for the week, you, right. you can only do, seven, I mean, 70 hours a week. So where where's the tweak at? <laughs> where, where's, exactly. Where's where's the tweak at? Where's the, where's, where's the difference? What's, what, what are we supposed to be excited for? Like. Where I, I I don't see it I I don't see it, Gassy man has uh since you've been in since yeah. you've been in trucking man it sounds like it's been smooth you was able to uh train uh a lot of a lot of people along the way you train some of your family you trains you 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 train both of your sons am I am I correct yeah. yes. All right, so they, they, now let's let's uh let's talk with your sons. Now I'm sure that they you you took them out with you when they was young. They they came out with you over the road 
uh, when they was young, while, you know, like during the summers and stuff like that, right? And that's how you was just, you know, right. kind of, kind of, you know, throwing little tidbits here and tidbits there. Um, when did they, when, when did your kids or your two sons really got interested in driving? When, when do you think they got interested wow. in driving? Well, the oldest one was on the boat gone for, you know, like 30 days at a time. Mm -hmm. And so the time he was being off from there, you know, and, you know, kind of sharing, you know, the revenue, what, you know, you're able to make and having the freedom to uh, the vacation whenever you want to, you know, to do, you know, take off mm -hmm. because you're your own boss. It showed a lot of interest in what they wanted to do. Okay. Now, so the one was on the boat, he, he come on right on off after a few years and uh, since I didn't go like he wanted to go on the boat. So therefore, you know, he was going for, to, to be able to, to be a uh, captain to drive the ship, but they was bullcrapping him around. So, so he come on off and now he made, he glad that he made the, the choice because see, he owned his own truck also. Okay. And the other, other one was, was holding back. You know, he didn't really want to get out there for us, which he still don't get out for, you know, but he made pretty decent because he got his own truck also. So, therefore, it's by them having all that freedom, you know, and, and that's that's the best thing by um, owning your own trucks, you know. So, okay. that right there made a big difference with them and relative seeing it, seeing it also, you know, they cuss and then all. So, they follow in the same footsteps. So, I took time out to train them. And I train a lot of my relatives and some friends, you know, also. You okay. Know. All right. So, throughout. Yeah, I never did. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I was, I never just, just trained with a trainer for a company. You know, I trained these guys, you know, that didn't, they didn't even have uh, no license. You know, I, I, I got them to the point they went down and took their permit and stuff. And then I got them in the truck with me. And they traveled throughout the country. We've been driving, you know, got them back in. And they did their road test and got their license, you know, and kind of, you know, did a little this and that to, to show some uh, experience, you know, so they didn't have to go back out with a trainer. And uh, stuff like that, it went real smooth. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's <laughs> up, man. So yeah. have you – now, it sounds like you say, you you know, you train some of your buddies and, you know, family and all like that. Have you have you took the time to train a female? Yes, I trained my sister, but she never did that with her license. She was crying all the time. I'm like, I won't take time training. I found a trainer, though. She got a CDL and ain't, ain't even put a foot in the truck. Drive <laughs> all that time. So. Would you? Would you? Uh, other, yeah. other, other than your sisters, man, because you know that I, I, I talk to a lot of female trainers. Uh, uh, you know, like I just, you know, my my one video of uh, Missouri summer, uh, show me state. That's her. That's her tag name. But uh, she, <laughs> she, yeah. she was telling me the story of her of her trainer that she woke up and the trainer was sexually assaulting her. I mean, dude, she said dude literally had her hands, I mean, his hands in her underwear, bro. And I was sitting there like, wow. come on, man. So uh, other than your sister, have you have you uh, trained any other females? And what's your thoughts about, uh, about females getting into the industry and being trained by trainers that's not looking out for their best interests? I, I really think that they they shouldn't be if they if they know that they ain't got their best interest and they showing some kind of you know interest in them. I think they need to get in contact with their dispatcher and get them another trainer so they can be feeling safe out there and and secure and uh you know out there. So yeah, I don't think they you know it, you know you got some some. Shockers out there. I can't say all of them, you know, when it comes to females. Mm -hmm. And some of them, I, I just think it's best to be with a more more of a female, you know, because temptation is out there, <laughs> you know. Yeah, right. And I have heard a few. I have heard a few stories, you know, like women come out and, and they come out for that purpose, you know, to, to get them a husband, a truck driver, and they got once they get with one, then they quit driving, you know. So. <laughs> 
But some at least some go. of the at least some of the females <laughs> at least some of the females I talk to they they all about their bags so they they ain't even looking for a dude they 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 coming out here like yo I, I'm coming out here for this bag I ain't coming out here for nothing else but yeah there is some females though that's 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 trappers so you know oh man so do do yeah, so come on, they don't, they, look they come like mm -hmm. no 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 go ahead go ahead go ahead. Yeah, I would say they come out, you know, you, you know, I can't uh, put them down. They come out and, and they found them a husband, you know, in the trucking industry, you know. You got some of them that, hey, they team up and they make real good money like that. And uh, you got some of them, like you say, and uh, I have worked with a lot of them, you know, they're about that, about their money, you know, and that's the that's the awesome thing. You know, I got a cousin, uh, you know, she's real skinny. The only like she need to be driving truck, but she out there got her own truck and everything, you know. So, that's what's uh, up. hey, the, a lot of a lot of the guys, a lot of the young folk generation, the guys don't want to do nothing. So the females, hey, they can out there making that paper. The sad thing is they taking care of the guys that don't want to do nothing. You know, you know what, man? And them and and and, <laughs> and them the guys, them the guys right there, man. That needs to that needs to get the that needs to get the f up out of the out of the seat. At least that's what this uh that's what this one female says. She says, uh she says, oh boy. She said, hold on right quick. Let me see if I can let me see if I can uh let me see if I can find that, man, because she said, she said, uh hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. So I can't no, not yet, not yet, not yet, not not yet on that one. Not yet on that one. Uh she damn, I can't even I can't even find it. Hold on right quick. Let me see if I can uh if I can break up the audio. Hold on right quick because she said, oh here she is. She says that uh fucked up. Hold on, let me see right here. This motherfucker here time and time and time again. Why are you ladies hiding motherfuckers that are good to you? It shouldn't even be no thing or no side nigga. Not when that side nigga is treating you like a diamond. Mm. Not if that nigga is treating you like the queen you are, bitch, and see your motherfucking worth. Do you understand me, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> she said, that's what she like. She said, the side nigga ain't doing nothing for you. You need to get the fuck up out that seat. <laughs> and let the real nigga do something for you. <laughs> That's what's up, man. And I, you know, I, I, I wholeheartedly, I wholeheartedly agree with that. I, I, you know, my name's Lockout Men, and I approve that message, man. Because a lot of these females out here, you know, a lot of these females out here got like two cent brothers, man, and they just don't want to do shit. They don't want to get out, get no job. They just want to sit around. They just want to. Come back home and be like, yo, have, have you, have you, have, have you, uh, have you went anywhere? Nah, I'm just waiting on the job. Exactly. Knock, I'm waiting on the job to knock on the door. You know what I'm saying? I'm just waiting on that job to knock on the door. Who is it? Job. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Nobody home. Nobody exactly. Nobody home, bro. Nobody home, man. Um, throughout this, throughout the time, uh, throughout the time, you know, throughout the twenty years that you've been driving, man, has it has it been any time out there that you well well are you 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 got kids? So are you married or what's what's your yeah. what, so during during the time yeah. that you, during the time that you was driving? How how did that affect? Uh, the loneliness between you and your wife out there, and how did you guys maintain the relationship during during your time of driving? Okay, but well, this was this is the second marriage here. Mm -hmm. uh, but but either either either, uh, either marriage, uh, put both marriage. You know, I never was really gone no more than about a week mm -hmm. because uh, you know it, the location that I got the job at the terminal. You know, we go out, we can be right back in that weekend. And so that basically been my whole career. And uh, most of my whole career, I've been a, a own operator. So therefore, I dictate my time. And like now, I've been with this one company here uh, for since 2011. 
and we in and out. Like right now, I'm at I'm at home. I, I'll be home big all this week here. I'll get running a few short things. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'll be working, but I'm running some short stuff this week. Now you still uh, now but, you're you're at least you're career. you're at least storing to the company where you at though. This you this is your truck though, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Continue. Continue. Yes. Okay. So therefore, I'm I'm um. I don't. I had never had a job that I I was gone three weeks at a time or two weeks, and if I was gone two weeks, it'd be it'd be my choice, and and not because I'm forced to, to go out like that, and uh, so therefore, therefore my relationship with the marriage, you know, been real good because I was I was there, okay. you know, and a lot of times when I, I was when I was living in the Memphis area, you know, I did a lot of the containers, you know, the containers, you know, you at home every day. Or you be back home the next day, you know, you go out and come back in. So that's been a whole lot to my career. So I wouldn't take no, go and work for nowhere, but I got to be out two or three weeks and on the home uh, a few days because, see, that's why uh, I want to be my own boss because I don't want them to be dictating how long I'm going to be out when they going home, you know, every night. Yeah, because companies these days now, man, they they want you. I I, I talked to a, you know I talked to a few. You know I got I got this series called Make the Call, and I call all these trucking companies, and you know I talk to their recruiters, and you know just to get some basic information for these, you know for these new drivers that's deciding to come on out here. And the biggest thing is is the is the home time, and they, you know, they want you to they want you to be out for four weeks and then you only get one day off or they want you to they they don't give you a full uh full weekend off if you're supposed to be getting off on i mean having the weekends off and stuff like that uh they they want you to you know drive uh like a month month and a half and all like that and i'm you know i'm like i i guess that's okay for some people but you know, but for people that's that's you know like that that are that has a young that has a young couple, you know your wife, your young wife, or you know girlfriend, or you know kids, or something like that, you you want to have that balance. You want to have the work balance, go out, make your money, and then come home and enjoy the time with your with your family. I mean, some guys that has that don't have the don't have that right balance. You know, I mean, they they go out, they come back and they don't do shit. You know, they get up, get out and right. do something, you know. So, but yeah, that's, man. that's true. Uh especially especially look, especially if if you if you doing right at home, you know, that that's 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 a big part. Now, you ain't doing right at home, you got multiple partners out throughout the country here and there, you know, hey, then, yeah, they ain't in a hurry. They might be home, but I ain't at home, you know? Right. And, and so I don't hear a lot of my guys, you know, they talk about their, you know, talk about that, you know. And uh, one thing they always talk about was with this town called Boys Town. When I first got started, like, Boys Town, you know, that's over in Mexico. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm like, wow. But one day, you know, I, I, I did experience it. I ain't going to lie. I experienced it. You know, and, and it's something, you know, but it's been many, many years ago on that part there. But, yeah, you know, say home time is important. And those companies out there that want guys to go, those that want to do it, you know, yeah, do what you do out there, you know. But if you got a wife, the house, and children at home, you cannot turn back the hand of time and get that time back uh, of your children growing up and, and that loved one, you know. Exactly. You know, I was in uh, Laredo. I've been down in Laredo plenty of times, and I, I heard of uh, I heard of I heard of Boys Town. I, I went over to the uh, I went over to the spot that one spot across the street from the pilot. What's that? The Aladdin. Uh, that that place is lightweight garbage though. But uh, but I went over there. But I I heard of Boys Town, man. I you know I I never got a chance to experience because I never knew who was the who was the guy to take us over there across the border. So I know right. this I, I know this is back in the day, man. So how did you come across how, who was who was the driver and how did how can we get across the border to go to Boys Town, man? 
if it's still Well, I'm going to tell, tell you the experience. That, actually, look, I'm going to tell you my experience right here. Now, it was a guy that they, you know, at the pilot, you know, they come on the radio and, you know, you get this guy. I can't think of the, the guy's name. Mm-hmm. You know, he had a limo. He'll take you across there. But one time, look here, one time I had, I had about four months. I my two sons, nephew, two nephews with me in okay. a cab over. Okay. And I was going to sneak them across to the boys' town, right? Okay. So okay. we go down up to the end, to the bottom mall. So we walked across into Mexico there. We called cab. And the, the driver was warning me. He like, how old, is, how old are you? You know, they like 16. And the oldest one was 16. So 16, or it's on 15. Mm-hmm. And he like, he's shaking his head. He said, you sure you want to go to Florida? That's like, what yeah, like, man. Go. Come on, we now. Got on a, go, go we ahead. got the boys' time. Uh-huh. We pulled up on the scene. We pulled up on the scene. The police them opened the door. When we got out, they took them straight, <laughs> straight to the jail. Damn okay. it, man. We went into the jailhouse, and, and so them, they, were, they were more about that, uh, that American money. And uh, so, therefore, the one that what was 15, he looked older than the one was 16. So, I said he was 18. So, I thought they were going to help me. But then they wanted me and the 18-year-old, which wasn't 18, to pay, uh, the, you know, to pay. And so, I ended up having to, to call the wife, tell her what's going on, for her to spend some money. I had to go back over to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the pilot. And uh, get some cash out the ATM and had her transfer some. And so I got the other over in Mexico, which they didn't want me to get it out of their machine because, you know, it's going to be Mexican money. Mm-hmm. And they wanted American money. They wanted the American money. Yeah, they wanted American money. money. And then, <laughs> and when, they, when I did, when I got back, uh, they had brought some, some laid over there to them in the jet while they had them in the holding cell, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Butt naked dancing and stuff, you know. They thought it was a trick because they they seen stuff on TV. They thought the cop was trying to get them, and uh, so when I did get back, you know, they had them sitting out because they had some old guy that put in jail, you know. It, it, but it was an experience. But once we paid the money, they would let us stay over there. And then that when that daylight came, uh, they was trying to get us again. But you know, since we already had paid, they let them know that you know we were good. Oh, okay. And uh, so that's the experience that they. That they uh, they, they I know they it. they had that memory for a lifetime, you know. I feel it, man. I feel it. Oh wow! So with that, with with, yeah, with that, with that right there, man. That that um, uh, with that right there, we can segue into uh, what happened to you uh a while back, man. Let me uh, let me uh, play a little bit of it right quick. Let me uh, bring it up. Uh, I your own debit card or whatever. So I can't get a supervisor. Man, because it's not one available at the moment. I am a sergeant, so I'm asking you how you want to pay with this. You can record me all you want. I want to say I just, I just need to know how do you want to pay your eight hundred fifty-five dollars is your assessment for being overweight. All right, what are my other options? That's it. Get told. I, well, your other option is uh, you can get out. You can get out of the vehicle, and I'll have a truck towed. That's your other option. Okay. And I don't have no, I don't have a chance to go to court. Yeah, you'll get to go to court afterwards. Well, there's all of that, yeah. But you got to pay first. So I'm going to have a court, court uh, day. So I'm going to have a court day. Well, but I can get you a ticket so you'll have a court day. All you got to do is this, this piece of paper I'm going to give you, and I have a number for Jackson. You call Jackson, you tell him what's up. No okay, cause see, I- All right, Gassy, man, take take us back to that day, man, where you uh, what what happened? You you got pulled over for being overweight, or you was at the scale and he and you drove sometime and he followed you. What what's the deal there, bro? The, the deal was we were coming back, had made it back to Mississippi. And we were following the uh, GPS, and we come come up on this road was uh, 57, 650 on the way. Uh, and so we we rode that that highway on down, and right there at the end where the Toyota plant was at, this this guy was was sitting at the end of the road. And as we came, you know, he he stopped us right there at the end, 
Mm-hmm. And we were no longer on that restriction road. Cause he was just saying, like, if they were coming the other way, he could have, you know, like, got him. But we was at the end, and he pointed, told us to pull underneath the overpass. And uh, and while we pulled underneath the overpass, and he and we turned the lights on and got back in his truck, turned the lights on, because he was walking back to the truck when he seen us come around the curve. Okay. And uh, and so he told us to go down there, uh, park underneath the overpass. And so that when he turned the lights on, come down and got in front of us. Uh, and then got us for uh, – being over over the fifty seven thousand, so we wasn't over gross. And the the uh, uh, Jeffrey White is the officer. How and he did, did not even he pulled out his portable scales? How, so, yeah, that's ahead. what I was about to ask you. How did he? How did he? How did he scale you to find out that you was you know over or underweight? Yeah, he he, he had some portable scales. He pulled out and. Uh, had it was me and my son, both of us, uh, because he was following me, and he had to put up on the on the, the portable scales, and he walked around checking, you know, and by me asking questions stuff like that, you know, I guess, and, and he didn't check the weight uh, correctly. That's why I sent you the the cat scales and his weight, and I told him it was no weight that I could be sixty seven thousand pounds uh, when I when my call on the weight. Uh, Thirty, I believe thirty-three thousand pounds, and then the truck all the way around thirty. And I told him it wasn't no way. And my son weighed more than I did, and he and he cited my son for six to five thousand, and he cited me, and I was less than my son, and he cited him me two thousand more. All right, so and, both uh, he so, didn't even he didn't so, even look at all. So Go both ahead. you, so both you and your son was driving separate trucks, and y'all both got pulled over. By him, yes, he called, he called us coming off and stopped us and told us to pull underneath the. Cause we wasn't even to have a, we look we looking at this. Uh, I tell you what, at the time when he stopped, and told us to pull underneath the old pad, we had passed that sign say fifty seven six fifty. You know, he's sitting right there at the edge. It's at his uh his vehicle parked right there at the edge. And he was actually walking from somewhere. So he, as he seen us big truck, and we had two cores. He had a core, and I had a core. Only so, he, so at that point there, he figured that we was probably way overweight, which we wasn't. And uh, but we was over the, the uh, that weight limit for that road though. All and right. by him giving me sixty seven thousand, causing him to charge me nine cents per pound, and the son was was actually weighed more than I did, but he gave him sixty five thousand. So that's for they he charged him only seven cents a pound. All and right. So my ticket come up to eight fifty five. Okay. So he so since he charged now this since he charged y'all, uh, in the video that you was talking, he didn't right. give you he he didn't want to give you a ticket. He he tried to extort the money from you. Yes, he didn't want it. He wanted. He he said since we had a Tennessee plate on the front of the truck that we had to pay right then. Now we got Mississippi license. We live in Mississippi, mm-hmm. and so therefore we supposed to have our day in court because we are Mississippi. You know the truck ain't quick go pay the fine. It, it, it's going toward our license, which is Mississippi. Right. Okay. Okay. But then we had a Tennessee tag on the front of the commercial. I mean, he gonna tell us we have to pay it, or we can get told. Okay, so if and so, I, so he, I'm I'm scratching my head because this this is the first time that I've that I've experienced uh, someone telling me that uh, that they they getting this story because usually it's like, okay, they give you the ticket, and then you pay the ticket, or you go to court. You know what I'm saying? So this dude is standing here like right. He's from what I gather, he's not going to give you a ticket unless you give him the amount of what the ticket would have been and then he would have let you go. That's that's what he was saying? Right. So he's Yes, and then he said if you give me Oh, go okay. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was I say he said if you give me a ticket, it go cost it go cost it go be more than the uh, overweight, 
and mm. I, I just didn't understand, you know. I, I'm not under, I'm not understanding that either. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But so he's trying to make a come up from the both of y'all about what about about a good sixteen sixteen hundred to two thousand dollars from you guys. Yeah, I tell you what, he actually, his son, he charged him, oh, I believe the ticket was around five or five something. Oh, five. Okay, and then yours and, is like, and, what, eight? Yeah, and, and yeah, eight fifty something. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and the thing is, the thing is, he didn't walk around to all the scales and write down the numbers. That, mm-hmm. that's, the, that's, that's the killer part right there. He didn't even do his job. He just come up with an estimate, and, but we couldn't fight it. Mm. And you see that in the video, right? Right. And we're looking at him, and we put him on the scale. He, he it's already a hot day that, that day, right? And we pulls up on that because he he kind of getting irritated, you know. Especially at me, he was getting irritated at me because you was day, asking all the questions. I might go a little, yes. And so therefore, with my son, I only see him see check one part of a scale, and he did not go around all of them and. And the son come up with sixty five thousand some pounds uh, that he cited him for, and I'm like, you weigh more, your car weigh more than mine, you know, your truck heavier, and you know, so we already know that that was a whole you know, lot of bullcrap right there, and that's why I asked for a supervisor, and he's like, it ain't now available, you know, he a yeah, sergeant. Yeah, he was a sergeant, and you he know? didn't want to, you know, he he was trying to he was trying to get over on you. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get about $1,300 up out of you guys, man. Like, you know, I mean, you know, I I can understand hustles. You know, I I think if he would, if he would have probably been a little bit more open and honest, maybe we probably would have understand it better. You know, like, yo, bruh, uh, well, you know, you overweight, yada, yada, yada. But look at here, man, if you, you know, give me, you know, five hundred dollars or something like that i'll let you go you know what i'm saying at least i would have under <laughs> i would have understood that a lot better instead of trying to instead of trying to legalize everything and i'll tell your truck so bottom line it for us man what what was the end result what what was the end result of all of that okay the end result right now that we stay away uh i did contact the guy in jackson called him up and he basically told me to appeal it okay. and so i just sent in a letter and everything appeal so i'm getting uh they sent me a letter back in uh october i can't think of the exact date they pulled it uh have a hearing on it and then i should know from that point there okay you know, okay if they go uh re- reimburse me because i did send them the proof uh like say i, I told the guy i wasn't denying that i wasn't overweight but i just didn't wait for he he put down, okay. and that's why he didn't want to supervise because he didn't do his job like he needed to because he know he didn't put the correct weight down, and so he he's scamming us out of extra money, you know. And then the first thing he gonna tell, go say that you know y'all make <laughs> money. So how we making money? I said that's what they think. They be thinking truck driver be making money, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, we make money, but we spend a lot of money. We sure you know? do. We sure do. Yeah, we sure and, and do. That, and so. Oh. And uh, so yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I'm waiting on, I'm waiting on uh, it'll be October before I know is uh, on the end result. But the guy did tell me from Jackson that uh, more likely, you know, you'll get refunded back. You know, well, I hope so I don't so. have to appear down that they sell. I okay. hope, I, I hope you able to, I hope you able to get that back, man. I, I don't think that was, I don't think that was fair on uh, on the officers to to jam you guys up like that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, there's right. some there's there's some shysters right. there's there's some shysters out here, man. Yeah, there is some shysters. Uh, true. So yeah, I hope uh, and, I, hope, uh, I hope that works out for you, man. Yeah, cause a lot of by this sharing this video, I had some uh, you know uh, police officers uh, that you know ex police officers and all that. You know, have uh, rushed out to Jackson. They also sent them videos of this clip of Jackson and everything. So, uh, so it's it's working out. You know, I at the end you. of the day, you know, uh, they they see how Jeff uh, Jeffrey White, you know, this officer Jeff White, you know how he conducting uh, 
conduct uh, business. Business out there, you know, wearing the uniform, you know. So yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Uh, is that gonna is it, is that situation gonna affect the company you're at least on to? Is it gonna is it gonna affect them any kind of way? No, nah, it won't. It won't affect them. Oh, okay. Okay. At all. All right. So, man, you know, yeah, it just, it just, oh, okay. go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I didn't say because it's just a, uh, uh, you know, overweight. You know, so it wasn't really no kind of violation in that. So it won't. They won't get cited for no kind of points or nothing like that. You know. Oh, okay. All right. So, you know, be, be, before we get on up out of here, and I, I do appreciate you coming on and taking the time uh, sharing your story with me, uh, Gassy, man. So thank you very much. Uh, you know, we're, we're in this crazy ass. Pan- yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we in this crazy ass pandemic right now, man. How, how did the COVID situation affect you, uh, affect your trucking life, man? To be, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, mm-hmm. with the government giving this money to these independent contractors, mm-hmm. it was sweet. That's mm-hmm. all I can say. It, mm-hmm. it was sweet. You know, mm-hmm. that PPP, the EIDL, you know, all that for small business, you know, mm-hmm. hey, it was sweet. You know, I got that PPP, I got $20,000 of that. You know, the EIDL, you know, they, that's the extra thousand because, you know, they kind of reneged on the 10000 on the grant. So they, but they're still, you know, being, being able to continue to run uh, with the product that we, we haul and everything mm-hmm. like that, you know, it, everything still was able to uh, continue to, to uh, the flow normal, okay. you know, and just pick up some extra cash, you know. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right, Gassy, <laughs> man, 20 years, 20 years, uh, rocked out with the life. What's your pet peeves, man? What what are your trucking pet peeves out here, man? All right. Uh, say it again. What what are what are what are some of your trucking okay. what what are some of your trucking pet peeves out here? Yes, I didn't understand that the pet peeves. All right. What what irks you the most out here in trucking? What irks you like what oh. irks like what irks me is motherfuckers in the uh fuel island. But what you've been out here longer than I have, so what mm-hmm. what irks you the most out here? What what irks me the most is is the the government with the DOT and you know, that they won't let us do what we need to do out here and they trying to put a lot of regulation on us. That's what irks me the most. You know, because we are here doing a job like they just sit around and trying to come up with different things, you know, to, to, to slow a trucker down, you know. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, I don't know the hell you heard about it. They talking about now about doing drug testing with the hair. You see? Oh, they like doing they it now, bro. Around. They they doing it now, man. Yeah, the, the hair follicles. Yeah, they doing it now, bro. Yeah. 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 That, that's crazy. But you know what, though? Mm-hmm. You know what? Mm-hmm. The, well, we can get ready for the race to go up because if a lot of you well, already got a shortage, to show these drivers and they ain't got these drivers now, then who are all the freight? That means they finna pay some money, you know. So that that's what irks me the most, right there. You know, they like, you know, you ain't got a life. A person ain't got a life outside of trucking. You know, if they go to the crib and you know smoke some weed, long they ain't on this pack and smoking weed, you know, hey, it, 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 it what's wrong with it? Mm. You, you know, see? that's no more than dragging beer. You know, you drinking beer, you know, you got a time frame and out your system, then you back rolling, you know, it like you tied to the company, uh, uh you contract, you know, like you're just, just a slave and you can't do you ain't got no kind of right to freedom to, to, to enjoy your life like you want to, uh, but die consequences, you know. If a man do a job and, and he's soulful and a level head and focused when they're out there rolling that big truck, then you know, what's wrong with why going back and chicken half product and long he right when you stop him. Stop that man. Man, listen, Gassy, man. You know, this this weed is is controversial now, man. I mean, it, it's it's legal just about damn near everywhere. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's illegal. Right. It's illegal for us to still smoke it, man. You know, and I know I know some drivers, you know, that's that that feels like, yo. 
why we can't just uh you know smoke our weed you know what i'm saying we could smoke cigarettes why we can't smoke our weed i don't know man yeah. i don't know i don't know like, and and you know and you, and you know if i know it only legal because why they ain't make the government ain't making money off of it. The government make money off of it here. They go and make it all. Exactly. They, they smoke much they want. Exactly. They gotta, the government got to get their money. That's what, that what this country about. Contract. They get the government get paid. You can get paid. You do anything without the government get paid. Set a moonshine. You go to jail. You go right to the liquor store and buy it. Mm. That's that's the difference. Mm. And so that would hit me the most. Them, they they out there trying to come up with different things to hurt the trucking industry, you know. Uh, so that's, that's what's that's up, it. man. Well, Gassy, man, thank you very much. I mean, thank you very much. Gassy Williams, everybody. Thank you. All right. I, I appreciate you uh, coming on, telling your story, bro. I, I, nice, I had a nice I had a nice time with you this evening, man. Uh, what twenty year? Yeah, tw- I enjoyed it too. Twenty year driver, a uh, lot of experience. What 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 kind of advice or tips that you can give to uh, these new jacks that's coming out here, man? The advice I can give them is to stay focused and don't never get too comfortable that that you can't have an accident. When you get too comfortable and and careless then that's where you'll make a mistake. And by being focused, you know, they talk about these these phones, devices in your hand and things like that. You know, just being focused and so you can take care of other people's loved ones as well as, as other truckers take care of your loved ones when you're out there traveling the highway. And uh, don't just sell it for a competent driver. Don't listen to the people telling you they, they wouldn't get their own trucks because staying a competent driver, you're only going to make a so much, but being our own operator, you can make a lot of money. But you gotta, you gotta save and let that truck and put back for your company. Put you that 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 truck. Take care of your truck, and they gonna take care of you. All right, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, Grassy, thank you very much for coming on, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me on the Lockout Man podcast show, you can do that. You can hit me up in the Gmail. That's Lockout Man podcast at gmail.com. Or you can see me over at Instagram. That's Lockout Men. Hit me up in the DM. Yo, I, if you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. You know what I'm saying? If you want to hook a brother up, do me that favor. Hook me up with some coffee, man. The the, the the coffee link and the cash app is in the description below, man. Hook me up. Dollar sign. Lockout, man. Yo, and until next time, man, I want to thank everybody for coming on. I want to thank everybody in the LOM community for being here, watching behind the scenes. I want to thank my, my special guest, Gassy Williams, for being here. Again, thank you. And on that note, Until next time, we're going to finish out. We're going to be gone. Y'all take it easy. Peace.